Well, here we are in Broadway. It's the east side of Broadway, the east end of the, more or less the high street really. And that's the view I'm looking at to paint. We did have sun earlier on, but um, you know, it's uh, one of those days that's sunny um, sometimes. Uh, and there has been a few spots of rain. Um, anyway, I'm going to put this down onto watercolour paper and uh, I'm going to lead you through the process really. Well, I've decided to come the quiet side, or potentially the quiet side, um, of um, Broadway purely because uh, it is a Sunday. Um, now the first thing I'm going to do is to use my number four brush in the normal way. It's a mop brush that points well and I'm going to put a sky in. I want to treat this um, with some looseness so I'm mixing. I'm going to use the the lovely Windsor Blue. To that I'm going to put in a bit of light red purely because I want to deepen the blue and create a grey um, a slightly grey sky. It's greeny grey which always uh, you know it's one of those days where um, you've got warmth and uh, warm and cool colours in the sky so we do have some white cloud but overall it's quite uh, quite fluffy cloud made it a little more light red to try and get some warmth now the sun will be coming from the left sorry sun will be coming from the right I'm trying to keep it light at the top of the uh, and I'm going to paint around the buildings for this one so that should be quite interesting. Now I'm going to add a little ultramarine now, not too much, just a touch, because as I come into the lower area, it's always nice to have a little bit of extra blue in there. There we go, look at that. Creating an illusion of a dull sky, but there's every chance that we do have some light um, sort of sun coming through really. Now I'm going to use the ultramarine with the light red. So it's ultramarine and light red to create a little bit of cloud work. So there's a little bit of sort of warm cloud there and have a touch of cloud there running in to that and we'll extend that to the other part there um, we're going to have another little bit of cloud coming in this side I'm not going to do too much to this cloud business because I don't want the sky too interesting good now we do have in the background there we do have um, uh, some hills and at the moment they're very dark purely because we haven't got the um, sunlight on them at the moment We've got the sunlight on the rest of the scene but not on the, the hills at the back so I'm going to really give them a bit of depth and to do that I'm going to use the ultramarine again with the light red but this time mainly ultramarine so I'm looking for a dark grey looking for a dark blue grey really and because the sky is still damp we will end up with that blue taking over the wash of the colour if you can get what I mean so we've got a nice dark deep blue and hopefully all being well it will then reflect on the distance feeling of, of a real dark sort of distant trees that's what I'm trying to reflect and in actual fact they go quite high up 
and I'm just rubbing across the paper trying to soften it a little bit it does actually it goes right the way through here so got a bit dry there but never mind uh, and that goes right the way across so that's fine that's on a loose sort of style which is exactly what I'm looking for breaking through those chimneys and all the way out to the outside edge there there we go right but now that's the real distance the real depth but of course as you come down you can see a bit of green so I'm going to add raw sienna to that and that will give me a slightly greeny grey albeit very dark and this is for more of the very dark trees in the distance quite a few dark trees there and it will really give punch to the sunlit buildings that's what I'm looking to do that's the ultimate aim whether we achieve that is a slightly different matter and there's one two little trees in amongst that that are quite dark so I'm just going to spring in a little bit of that like that a little bit like that and that I think is about as far as we need to go okay remove a lot of moisture from the brush and just lift off any areas of color that you see standing along the bottom edge it's likely to bleed into the rest of the um, painting brilliant now we need to allow that to completely dry before we move on to the next stage well I did say completely dry but um, it's not completely dry at this stage so but I must move on um, time is marching on so going to clean the brush again now Cotswold stone lovely my favorite mix and indeed as I discussed once with James Fletcher Watson that's his favorite mix is raw sienna light red and cobalt blue now the mix of that will depend on the stone you see I've not put any cobalt blue in this because this is the real sharp sunlit side of the building so lovely Cotswold stone sort of section there and you notice a lot of these stone buildings the old Cotswold stone they vary as they come down a little bit more red in that just add a dab more red there you go okay clean the brush now just the yellow a bit more water to that go around the windows these windows are, are light um, well white frames really which is um, a little bit unusual um, but it's um, quite a feature of these uh, these old stone buildings that do hold quite a varying tone of color due to the aging of the um, the stonework that's there right now do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to drop in a little bit of blue here and there and that gives it's like a blue hint to it and that gives that age to the stone in places notice how I'm putting it in, for, in just quite selective areas okay now I'm going to use the same similar mix in the distance but I'm going to put a bit of blue with that because the distant buildings are a little bit less intense in colour that will give a feeling of depth which is what we're looking for when we paint these distant buildings okay I'm not doing the uh, sunlit side at the shadow side just yet okay so this is still Cotswold stone but if you notice it's considerably toned back and most of this is in sunlight which um, a little bit more blue going in 
because there's this building here is quite aged and slightly away from the sun all right we'll put those trees in shortly okay right i'm then going back purely with the raw sienna yet again so i want to pick up the light fell there and the light fell on the front of that building there we go there is some Cotswold stone underneath those windows it's going to be very suggestive that's the thing when you paint these buildings don't get too bogged down with detail it really is vital that you don't get bogged down with too much unnecessary detail because if you do unfortunately things can go severely awry all oh, that bits in sunlight there just looking at all the light sunny bits really that's what i'm trying to achieve trying to get a bit more a bit more aging to this stonework in the foreground here particularly in the shaded sides let's just lift that away because it's a bit dark there you go there we are and a little bit more aging to the stones there perhaps a bit more aging there yeah yeah i'm pretty much uh, pretty much happy with that seems to be working quite well now while that's drying a bit i'm going to put the road in and that's just going to be a grey grey sort of tarmac business and um, we do have some a little bit of dotted white lining in places whether i need to show that probably don't actually probably no need to to show that but as i come forward i'm going to put a little bit of light red with that just to try and give a fennel of depth um, like that and really in the foreground a real stroke of light red my little trick to give depth to the road and also gives a fennel of it's going slightly up here where you get a bit of depth to that road then there you go good almost looks like a snow scene hmm. well there you go that's a possible i suppose a bit more uh, stonework goes in here and here and uh, there's a building there so whether we'll include that or not i'm not sure good okay let's see how far we've got with that okay. what mix are we going to use for the um the tile work the lovely cotswold tile well my favorite mix again and i suppose you'll probably ask me if that was james favorite mix well i think it probably was because I learnt it from someone um, and that is the same three colours but of a more intense mix and of course more blue gone into the mix as well so that's the reason why so it's the blue the yellow and a little bit of red so it's pretty much the same okay and we're going to treat the roof area is the same these are going to be darker than the sky maybe the right thing to do and of course because the colors are a little more stronger we end up with a slightly different tone within that as well which is all pretty legitimate thing to do when you're painting um, and i am using a lot of artistic license here which um, um even in the drawing i've pulled these buildings further forward um, and uh, so consequently they don't look as far away you know it's something that i did want to do which is uh, a real um 
something that I felt needed to be done. But that's, as I say, purely up to the artists, really, the way they want to depict these old buildings, whether you want to be exact or whether you want to be a little, a bit of a license used. That's sometimes um, my way of doing things. Not always, but sometimes. Oh, and there's just another roof here that needs to be dropped in. Good, just one or two other bits and bobs that need to be sort of attended to. Going to put in a nice bit of strength to that, a bit of strength to these chimneys. They're always um, nice um, areas just down the sun shadow side to those. Um, yeah, that's lovely. Keeping plenty of white paper, always a good thing to do. Okay, well, the next area, there's some real strong earthy greens in uh, some greenery here. So I'm going to put it in. I, I mustn't hold back with the really dark colours in this area. Because I feel that it will help to give the whole thing punch. The end of the whole thing, then it may be that we've um, overdone it. But there you go. That will remain to be seen. If I drag the brush... It creates a more sunlit feel, a bit of topiary going on there, which, um, and I can fill in that side a little harder, but a little bit less intense that side. Hopefully if I can get that to work. There are a bit of topiary going on, and um, a bit of hedging here. Um, there is some yellow in that, but I'll introduce that shortly. And one or two little twiddly bits uh, that's a technical term twiddly bits um, there which helps to break the top up of these uh, it's a bit of hedging um, good right now this is where I'm going to drop a little bit of the yellow just to give a little bit of lighter yellowy green to certain sections there's a little bit of a yellowy green there a bit more yellow Let's really bring out a little bit more intensity there. And there is some yellows in amongst that. There and one or two little bits and pieces there. Two little yellow patches, the lower part of that. Um, oh, a bit of yellowy green there. One or two little bits of planting here and there. That's nice. Oh, and there's some nice yellowy planting I said yellow, but I've still got that yellow, but never mind. It's green anyway. There, and that goes up there. Brilliant. So that's got sort of that topiary area out there. Then I'm going to paint in a bit of hedging along the top there. And it does extend a little bit the other side as well. So there you go. Helps to give perspective as well on that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of that yellowy green for a bit more water in that, a bit more paint. And I need, don't want too much, need a, it, it wants to be bluey, purely, doesn't want to be too dark. Really light bluey green for the bank there. And this grass comes right the way down. And as it comes into the foreground, it does get completely a bit more vibrant. I think I've got that. And some little touches along the bottom edge there where it's not quite as dark. But that'll probably be done later with shadow, perhaps. There's a bit of edging to the grass there, a bit of grass edging, grass verge. And there is another grass area there. And that denotes that. And that comes around there like that. Here we are. 
excellent stuff. Right, while we have this dark colour, I'm going to use burnt umber now with the Windsor Blue to get some dark conifers in the distance here. And uh, this needs to be sort of stood up in places. It just shows exactly where these dark conifer shapes are. Always a lovely thing to, you know, dark greens show up the areas of the light buildings. But of course we do have one or two standing right up into the background there. That's an interesting feature that helps to give a bit of depth to that. Drag that away, perfect. What I'm going to do is create that as an overhang too. So I'm going to cut that back a touch, bring that into there like that. That can then come down a little tighter there. Good, that seems to be working quite well. But now I'm going to use a smaller brush now. I've just put some colour into that right hand side of the uh, left hand side of the building. Just going to use some darker colour with a smaller brush. Same mix as the roof area but obviously these windows are actually away from the light these dormers are away from the light so they do need to have a different tone on them so consequently they're nice and dark and that's the way you get the funnel of, uh, of light onto the lighter parts there you go look at that justified with shadow at a later date um, oh, we've got other dormers there, one there, one there, don't know whether I've got them all in, but I'm not going to be concerned about that. Must remember to put the overhanging roof shadows on the right hand side of these dormers. And what else have we got here? Oh, there's another, there's another dormer there, of course there is. Well, it's not a dormer, it's part of the build as well. There you go. Look at that. And of course the underside of that goes in too. Good. Now I'm going to do the window. Oh, <laughs> I have saw some other bits. Here we go. Bit of uh, roof work there on these uh, bay windows. There we go. Apart from that, it really is uh, a question of the glazing on the windows. Ultramarine, ultramarine burnt umber. Let's use, ult yeah, the ultramarine and burnt umber. That's going to be my mix for that. Fairly dark. If you look at those, they're fairly dark. And I'm just going to put in the glazed areas, leaving the white frame. And not necessarily all of the glazed areas either. Because we may have some reflection there. Can you see the quick way I'm putting those in? If you're loose in one area, you can be loose in lots of other areas. Well, that's my sort of theory anyway. Um, oh, the window goes lower than that. Just counting the panes of glass. Wonder why I've got a little bit extra at the bottom there. Um, good, good. Now, I'm going to change to almost all ultramarine and a little lighter for the glazed areas here just so that they reflect um, the sun for some unknown reason I think they probably could there we are and also that 
bit of window work there and this one I'm gonna remain reflecting the sun or the sky or whatever lovely um, one or two other darker windows that really I've not put in but they are in the distance so consequently they actually all being well won't actually make any difference there we go a bit of roofing there you know I'm just dotting around with a bit of interest there to the building um, all be shown with shadows eventually Perfect. Good. That's it. Now, let's go in with the shadow work. Okay. Well, what I'm doing now is to put the the um the sh the shadows in, and I'm using Windsor Blue and and um. Sorry, I'm using Windsor Blue and a red. And the red is Indian red. And that's going to sweep right the way down there. Like that. And it's going to sweep right the way down there like that. And it's going to finish the corner of that building paint around those that topiary hedging may need some shadow on that sh later but this once it dries it will bring everything into sunlight there we go look at that it's a little bit one or two little touches down that side there two little touches under there that to me really gives sunlight to that that build right you are and um, I'm going to go quite a bit of sunlight quite a bit of shadow there and a fair little bit there too perhaps right up to the corner there and on the overhang of that building there a little bit on the roof yeah let's put a little bit down the roof and down that left hand side there okay we're going to have a little bit under there because that is purely where i think a lot of the shadow would be yep and what i'm going to do just to get rid of a lot of uninteresting areas here there is a window goes on to that but we'll deal with that shortly hey hey up deal with that very shortly and that's going down inside there shadow on the side of that shadow on the side of that and on the side of that there we go nice yep pretty happy with all of that so far as it goes uh what have we got all oh, right we've got overhang there got overhang there a little bit there brilliant like that right bit more indian red bit more blue indian red and blue is quite a nice mix for producing these types of um, of subjects really um, and right we've got that's running down there like that that's running down there like that a bit on the overhang a bit on the left hand side of that so that shows that up in sunlight this would then be in shadow 
and that would cast a shadow across there. That would be in sunlight. Just got to try and work out which areas are in sunlight and which are in shadow, which is not always an easy thing to um, to work out. Right. Now we go down onto the road with that. Um, that could very well have quite a punch to it. So let's use a bit of real punch here to get that sweep across the road like that. I've got to remember it because it's gone now so, so I will need to remember what the shadow was like or what the shape of the shadow was like really. Um, and it goes quite a way across the road perhaps the odd chimney standing up I don't know just assuming a little bit on there a bit on the overhang of that it's always a good thing to have good really getting a punch to this now now left hand side of the chimneys and overhanging area section there they really stand out in clear relief that's going to have a little bit more strength that's going to have a little bit more strength that's not that's I'm going to leave that because I want that to show up against that dark color there I'm going to leave that I'm going to put it a little bit more strength under the overhang of that um, just to give it a bit more punch down the left hand side of the topri parts of that area there that's good yep some little touches there before it goes up into the light side brilliant now I'm going to do a little bit of the overhang there just to double double show that because I think that's important that that the sunlight is shown up there like that a bit more so there brilliant now what I'm going to do is clean the brush and soften all that so I don't want there we are, look at that. That's the way I soften it and blend it through and, and give it an aged sort of feel. Age the buildings themselves. A bit darker, a couple of areas there required. Down there. And then of course, we've got the chimneys a little bit there excellent stuff right one or two little details to go in tell you what I will do there is another building that's sweeping a shadow across here so that's I think a, quite a legitimate thing to assume that uh, we do have a shadow from another building there and this is going to go in quite deep in the foreground here because that really does need to be shown one or two finishing touches and I'll show you how to do that in a second well, I'm using light red and Prussian blue for what I would class as the very finishing touches which to me a little bit of lining always helps to sharpen up certain edges um, edge of the tiles perhaps across the top down the right hand sides of the windows just to help show a little bit of um, detail to that comes down like that more or less a shadow really but it does highlight certain areas across the top there down the right like that gives a real 
real light punch to that and of course there are windows here which can now be picked out within the lighter or the darker colours so they will go right down there like that down there like that and I think there was one on the end as well but never mind they'll they'll be put in a little bit sharp sharpness and a little bit of te detail into that there you can sharpen all these edges up you see that's a good thing about um, using these dark colors that really really does pull the whole thing together and and makes it stand stand out which you know some artists would some artists wouldn't and that's uh, always um, something that uh, we have to um, take into account some artists will say oh no I wouldn't do that but there you go um, that's the way it is when you come to paint and of course as you go away into the distance you use less of it so you've got to be a little bit careful now as we start to um, play with these more distant buildings and this building actually had beams on it so we put the beam in there we put the beam in there like that then we put a beam across there and another beam there like that and then we have um, another beam that comes across there we have a window there so we'll put that in in this dark colour we have another little pair of windows there that's going to be put into that with that dark colour and then we have a funny beam there, this one slanting, we have another one slanting there. Strange way they built these, these old buildings. Um, interesting, you know, that's what makes them interesting I suppose. A uh, couple of windows here. There we go. Not trying to make too much of a statement with those. Got to put a roof on that. Um, oh, and there's a window there in that part of the build. So, you know, it, it all helps to give that feeling of uh, ultimate depth to the rest of the painting. Two little touches there going in. Um, under there, under there, under there like that. These are dark window frames, so now is the opportunity to put them in. Not putting in with any detail, it's just purely suggestive, really. There's a door there, so that's the reason I've painted that in like that. Oh yes, there's a bit of interest there shortly. Um, one or two little touches there. There we go. Now, back edge of that chimney just to help sharpen that up. And of course that would in turn cast a shadow up there so we can use this colour for the shadow. I um, think it would be at that sort of angle but there you go. We're not really worried too much about that because um, it is what it is really. A um, little bit extra detail under those areas there, a little bit there. Yeah I think that I think that shows a traditional Cotswold stone old aged building. That's what I'm trying to achieve. And uh, overall I think we're pretty much there. A little bit of blue going in four windows in the distance that I've not shown. There we 
there we go that shapes the, the windows up now the windows are like that so I'm putting them in after color but if you shape them like that all of a sudden they turn into windows there we are oh a bit darker color here uh, all sorts of dark color going in yes and then finally to finish it off we've got to put some greenery there so all we do sunlit green so let's use a bit of yellow sunlit green fairly strong not too uh, not too weak some little touches of green there it's planting really which all runs along there like that yeah that's uh, quite happy with that yep just going to use the large brush now to stroke in what I'd class as sort of shadow from the sun that's casting a shadow across there you can just see the start of that shadow there it's it's a sort of like a cloud shadow really just to give a feel of sunlight and it sweeps across the road like that allow that to dry off very nicely now just got to show that roof up now reveal that roof quite easily done always the best thing to do is to reveal roofs right at the end where there's a where there's a, a roof that you're a little bit un, unsure about and I'm sure now that that needs a roof area in there like that and there it goes it's in now all of a sudden that justifies that standing away that chimney area without that you wouldn't see that that is a roof good back to our final details Indian red actually light red I said touch of blue winds of blue to finally touch in some little darker touches along that edge there darker touches under the greens just to just justify the sunlight there that's it and uh, one or two little bits of planting oh there's a dark area of planting there fiddle that through that's another specific term fiddle it through the the edge of the road always needs to be sharpened possibly the edge of the path there is a couple of little paths that are running down from the buildings that's always good to to show um, it's all about the right hand side really this one but we've got to um, show certain areas up drag that through use your fingers uh, um, oh there's a yeah yeah there is it's a curb there so I'm going to show that well it's not really showing it it's more or less an impression of it really like that and just the edge there perhaps oh yes 
the edge of that there um, little sections on top of that walls little wall sections there brilliant I think we can safely say that apart from a creeper that's creeping up here that I think I should include quite a quite a large feature really I'm toned it back a little don't want to get too too bogged down with that and then finally some little hints at stone that's quite a quite a bland little part of the wall so just going to hint where there's one or two bits of stone work um, that are creating um, a bit of shadow work and of course there's a lintel shall we show that lintel go on then that is of a different color so let's put that in lintels on all those windows there and I think we're going to have to leave it at that because if we don't we're in danger of overdoing the whole thing so let's take the surround away and sign it up I've taken the surround away um, I think you can virtually see that just going to sign it in my normal signature there we go and that is High Street on the east side of Broadway in the Cotswolds okay well I've returned back home and decided to um, add a couple of figures so let's get going with that right um, they're going to be in the shaded area so there's no need to worry about um, color really it's just um, it's just uh, it's more or less a shaded uh, feel we're looking for quite dark because they're in the shaded area and I'm gonna put them it's always nice to put a couple of figures in occasionally I think I've uh, got to get the scale right heights of the figures probably somewhere about there and probably a smaller figure there just making their way up the road make that just a little bit wider bit of an arm out there there we are and that is all you really need to do if you just to give a bit of life to these um to the um to the picture really now another thing I'm going to do now I've returned I'm going to add some warm tones you can do this very sensitively um, if you need to sharpen up or warm up any tones that um, quite often you do um, with uh, certain paintings um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to add lemon yellow to enhance the Cotswold stone raw sienna and plenty of water and here we go Well, see the way that's really enhanced that uh, sense of Cotswold stone. So that's also you've got to use plenty of water when you do this. Also a section there. See the way that really brings it all to to sharp light. 
section there, just there as well. There we go. And I did notice that on the opposite side, we had quite an area of, uh, of, of light hitting that area there, that area there, and also just the corner of that building. Then all you do, soften that back to blend it through like that. There we are. Oh, and perhaps a little touch there. A little touch there. Hmm? I'd say that's that's looking quite uh, quite sharp and quite brilliant. Good. Well, pretty happy with that overall. Um, nice sense of light. Um, it's that chimney as well. And perhaps that chimney give it a little bit more there. Brilliant. Well, that is about it, I think. It's about as far as we can go with that one. Um, really enjoyed painting that one. And um, for those of you that haven't seen my YouTube channel before, please subscribe. Um, click the link, bottom right hand corner. And uh, for everyone else, thank you very much for subscribing. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching.